Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today I'm going to weigh in on a debate that I didn't even really know was raging on the internet until fairly recently. And it's about whether or not Bark River Knives quality control has gone down the tubes recently. I got my first Bark River knife last year, and it was this, my Ultralight Bushcrafter. A lovely little knife. I did a review of this video if you would like to check that out. And in the review, I was quite pleased with this knife. Since then, I have gotten two more Bark Rivers. I have here an Aurora Scandi in CPM 3V. Beautiful knife as well. And then here, I have a Mini Gunny in Magna Cut. So I have three Bark River knives. And it was only recently that I was looking on forums and finding a lot of dissatisfaction with Bark River quality control and a lot of dissatisfaction with their customer service. And when you're looking at anything on the internet, you always have to bear in mind that the most minor thing can get really, really magnified because, you know, you have thousands and thousands of people who might be customers and very few might be angry or disappointed or unhappy, but those voices can become magnified when they are put out online or on forums. So you never really know exactly what to think. It always reminds me of when the iPhone 4 came out and everyone said that your reception would just drop to nothing if you held the phone in a certain way. And it apparently was this horrible problem that was affecting every user. And I had an iPhone 4, never noticed any problem. Everyone I knew who had an iPhone 4 never had any problem with it. So maybe it was affecting some people, um, but maybe it was a very small number. But if you looked on the internet, it seemed as though it was affecting everybody and the entire phone was a disaster. So I never know if that's the case with something when I look it up online. And judging by the comments that I see in forums and on YouTube videos where people talk about Bark River knives, you would think that they were the worst knife, ma knife maker in the entire country, perhaps the entire world. And so I wanted to take a look at these three knives they're the only three Bark River knives I have, but I think that's a fairly good sample size. They're, it's kind of the luck of the draw. I got three knives. How are they? Is the quality control good? Now, obviously, it's entirely possible that I, I just got very lucky and got three good knives. If they are good, we'll check it out and I'll show you the quality. Um, if some of them are bad, does that mean they're all bad? If they're all good, does that mean they're all good? Not necessarily, but I just thought it would be perhaps enlightening to take a look at these three knives, show them to you in detail, look at the grind, look at the fit and finish of the handles, the materials they use, and just show you what my experience has been with Bark River knives. So let's take a closer look. All right, so here are my three Bark River knives in the sheaths that were provided by Bark River. I didn't buy any aftermarket sheaths for these. These are all the actual Bark River branded sheaths. I really like these ambidextrous sheaths, by the way. I think they do a really good job. Low profile. Um, so here we go. The first one I purchased was this. It's the Ultralight Bushcrafter. This is in CPM 3V. And this was one that was just online at, I believe this was at DLT when I got it. And it's a desert ironwood handle has just normal pins, nothing fancy other than the fact that it has black liners and that desert ironwood, which I think is just gorgeous. I think it's my favorite handle material. I think it just looks beautiful. And this knife is flawless. You may notice that there are some kind of swirls on the blade. That is where I have done my own sharpening after the fact. This came pretty damn sharp. It would shave right out of the box um, I didn't sharpen it for a while. I was just kind of stropping it if it ever needed any touch up. And then I finally did a sharpening myself after a while. But I love this knife. I've done a full review of this. If you haven't seen that yet, you should check that out. But it's just so nice. It's very petite, fairly thin stock. So it's very light, um, still fits my hand. I have very big hands and I can get four fingers on this grip. It feels great. It's nice for just light little tasks. It's something that I like to carry with me. This is kind of a daily carry knife, and it's small enough that it's not obtrusive. Like I said, really like the sheath. And if you just look at the fit and finish here, it's flawless. 
there is not a single thing wrong with this knife where it mates up with the liners and the tang it's completely smooth no rough spots when they sanded down the handle the grind is nice and even I'm not sure how well the camera will pick that up but you can see it has a nice even grind on either side and I can't see any issue with this knife whatsoever. A little caveat there though, this is the second one I got. The first one that I got sent by DLT had a little divot in the spine. There was just a little, it just wasn't completely sharp and even on the spine. I'll insert a picture here. It's the picture that I sent to DLT when I said I wanted to return it and you'll be able to see what I meant. Nothing major, but it was enough that I thought, eh, I think I'll return this and get a different knife. And so I contacted DLT and they sent me this one. And this one is absolutely flawless. So if we were just going by this experience out of two Bark River knives, one was flawless and one had a slight minor defect. Next, this was a special order, a custom order. This is a beautiful Bark River Aurora Scandi. This is in CPM3V. The Ultralight Bushcrafter is in CPM3V as well. This one has mosaic pins. It has a burgundy canvas micarta handle, which it's really hard to capture on camera. I'm not even sure how this is going to show up. Sometimes it looks like a deep purple. Sometimes it looks almost black. Sometimes it looks almost rusty red. It's really fascinating how it changes in color, but it's gorgeous. And with the mosaic pins, you have that kind of brass surround. And then they did that with the lanyard hole as well. And once again, I have not seen a single flaw with this knife. You can look there at the grind. Very even on either side. Sometimes you'll notice that maybe the grind is not super even. Um, the blade geometry comes out maybe more on one side than the other. This has no issues that way. The spine is nice and straight. I've scraped a fire steel on it a couple times now, so there might be some divots there. But it's just a gorgeous knife. It also came nice and sharp. I didn't notice any secondary bevel or edge on there. It just seemed like a really nice Scandi grind. Um, it's flawless. There's nothing wrong with this knife whatsoever. Now, this was a custom order, so maybe they take a little bit more care on these. I'm not sure, but I just love this knife. I love the weight. I love the feel of it. I love the handle geometry and the blade. It's just a fantastic knife and the sheath as well. I really enjoy this sheath. I think it fits the knife really well. I like the fact that they have these ambidextrous options. You could do scout carry if you wanted on this knife. Um, Absolutely no complaints whatsoever about this Aurora Scandi in CPM3V. I think it is gorgeous. Maybe I should keep these out on their sheaths so you can see them as we're talking about the knives. The third knife, this is one I just got and I had actually kind of forgotten that I had ordered this. I think it was when I was looking for a small fixed blade that I could everyday carry. I ordered this and this is a mini gunny. This is in MagnaCut, and it has, it's a little dirty, it has brass pins, it has natural liners. You probably won't even be able to tell that they're there because they blend in so well with the desert ironwood, which, yes, it is a desert ironwood handled knife, just like my ultralight bushcrafter. And I think I had ordered this and then forgot about it, and then or didn't forget about it, but then found this in stock at DLT and ended up getting that. And then this was much, much later, I think over a year later that this one was available. And I realized, oh, I kind of forgot that I had ordered that thing. I guess I'll get it. Um, this blade is kind of dirty too. I've been using it a little bit. This again is flawless. I cannot find a single problem with this knife. The blade geometry is perfect. The grind looks perfect. The handle is super even on either side. You can't notice any little protrusions or any problems whatsoever. It's nice and smooth where it should be smooth. All the lines are sharp where they should be sharp, well-defined. 
The handle mates with the body of the knife really, really well. No issues whatsoever. The grind is even, it comes up the same amount on both sides of the blade. It came nice and sharp as well. I have stropped this, I haven't sharpened it since I got it. But it's flawless, the handle's gorgeous. I think this desert ironwood is just so beautiful. I love how that looks. Maybe just compare the two knives here. Similar in size. The gunny blade is a little bit longer and definitely thicker stock than the ultralight bushcrafter. And yeah, weighs a noticeable amount more than the ultralight bushcrafter. And I like the difference in the two handles too. This one has kind of a more swirly pattern. This one has a straighter pattern, but they're just so pretty. I can find nothing wrong with these knives. I don't use them a ton. Like these are my everyday carry knives, at least the uh, Gunny and the Bushcrafter are. This one is for if I ever go camping and just doing chores and things like that. I've used it sometimes at work too, but typically I'm gonna bring my Mora to work. This is the one I use a lot. Um, you can probably tell by the way it looks. I do concrete work and this is the knife that I typically carry with me. I don't want to destroy mostly the sheaths of these knives if I took them to work. So they don't get a ton of heavy use, but they do see use and I do carry the Gunny and the Ultralight, Ultralight Bushcrafter on a daily basis, one or the other. So there you go. I have three Bark River knives and all three of them are fantastic. The one caveat being that my first ultralight bushcrafter had that little divot in the spine and it was replaced. I didn't deal with Bark River directly with that. I dealt with DLT and they, no questions asked, just sent me another knife. I don't know. You can draw your own conclusions, I guess, but I think that's a pretty good track record, at least for me. Obviously, this doesn't mean that people haven't had bad experiences, but I have no issue telling people that if they buy a Bark River knife, they'll probably be satisfied. My older brother has a Bark River that he bought. He thinks it's great, he has no issues with it. Most people I know, I don't know a ton of people with Bark River knives, but those I do have had no issues either. So maybe the issues online have been exaggerated, maybe not, I'm not sure, but if you were to read a forum on knives, you would think that 50 to 60% of the Bark Rivers out there are horrible, and I think, that the ones I have are some of the most beautiful knives I have ever seen. So there you go, gang. My three Bark River knives. The Ultralight Bushcrafter, the Aurora Scandi, and the Mini Gunny. They're all fantastic, all three of them. I did have that first Ultralight Bushcrafter. That wasn't bad, but it did have that little, little dent on the spine that I didn't like. I just returned it to the retailer from which I got it and got this one as a replacement. And this one is, is gorgeous. It's beautiful. This is gorgeous. It's beautiful. This is gorgeous. It's beautiful. All the quality control, all the fit and finish, the quality control, the fit and finish on all three of these knives has been fantastic. So I feel pretty positively about Bark River. I haven't had to deal directly with them for any customer service issues, so I can't speak to that. But as far as how confident I am in purchasing a Bark River knife sight unseen, I'm pretty confident. Two of these were custom orders, the Mini Gunny and the Aurora Scandi. Maybe they take more care on custom orders, I don't know, but this wasn't a custom order. This is just one that was replaced for me by DLT. Um, so that's where I am with it. I think they're good knives. I think they're some of the most beautiful knives I've ever had. I can't say that that invalidates people who have had bad experiences. I can't say that I might never have a bad experience, but I feel pretty confident in recommending Bark River knives to other people. And I don't think the odds are that you will have a bad experience if you order a Bark River knife. At least I hope so. That's been my experience so far. So thank you so much for watching this look at these three Bark River knives. And hopefully that will help you make a decision if you are contemplating buying a Bark River knife in the future. I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things. I'll see you later.